everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. We've got a good one on tap today, and there's going to be two quarterbacks ready to get it done on the gridiron. It's Manning's Giants going up against Rodgers' Packers. With that, let's welcome in our fine broadcast team. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. This place first opened way back in 1957. We are inside legendary Lambeau Field here in Green Bay. No team means more to a city than the Packers to Green Bay. And this was the scene a few moments ago as the green and gold made their way out of the historic tunnel. They're ready to go as they get set to match up with Eli Manning and the New York Giants. And hi again, everybody. Alongside my partner, Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden. And Charles, when you and I were going through our final run-throughs at breakfast, we kept thinking tonight we're going to get to see a couple of very good passing offenses. And we're talking about both sides having multiple receivers that could have an impact on this game. It's not just one guy that's going to make all the plays. If you take him away, maybe number two, number three, they make the big plays that impact who wins the game. Set to return, this is Jeff Janis. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. Green Bay quarterback Aaron Rodgers bringing out the offense here. And the Packers' whole season in 2017 obviously went south against the Vikings. Week 6, that was the collarbone injury to Aaron Rodgers. He came back against the Panthers, thought they might recover, couldn't get into the playoffs. It was a strange season in Green Bay, wasn't it? It certainly was, and now there have been a lot of changes since the season ended in Green Bay because there will be a new offensive coordinator. There will be a new defensive coordinator. Obviously, there are going to be some new players that are coming in. But as long as Aaron Rodgers is piloting this team, they will remain a contender if he's healthy. The first carry here for Ty Montgomery. And able to stay on his feet past the 30 to about the 33-yard line. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. And now the offensive starters for the Packers. One thing about talent, it travels in the NFL, and Martellus Bennett, no matter where he plays, no matter what uniform he puts on, he plays at a Pro Bowl level. Strong, fast, smart, able to get down the middle of the field and also work on the perimeter to make big catches and provide an excellent target for his quarterback. On second down, Montgomery. And this time not as successful as he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. And we look now at the defense for the Giants. It's almost become a cliche that when you talk about Jason Pierre-Paul, you start with his athleticism at defensive end. But what I've observed during his career is not only that athleticism, but the craftiness that has grown year after year as he's learned more moves, how to take on blocks, how to get away from people, and still get the quarterback on the ground. This defense looking for an early stop. This is third down and six. Working from the gun, Rodgers. It's caught, Nelson. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. The 21 yards there as they convert on third. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass trade in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. They go play action here on first down. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. And their inaugural sack of the game coming from an unlikely source. You mean it wasn't a linebacker? It wasn't a defensive end? It was somebody like you. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's a surprise for the offense. That's not what they normally get when they think about pressure.
Rodgers to throw on second down. He finds Randall Cobb with a completion. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. That one good for 17 as they're set up better now for third down. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. From the gun on third down, Rodgers. And that is incomplete. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they run successful. On now is Mason Crosby, who's hit from as far as 58 in his career. They'll spot it at the 47, so call it a 57-yard attempt. And he missed it. It's no good. And this will remain a scoreless game. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. Well, before the possession switches here, I had written down that I wanted to talk about some of the awards this past season in the NFL. We know Brady was the MVP, but... Todd Gurley, Offensive Player of the Year. How about that for a bounce back? Many were questioning whether he'd had a sophomore slump the season before. Didn't even get to 1,000 yards. Was a dominant force in 2017. How about his teammate Aaron Donald yeah. on the defensive side? He took home Defensive Player of the Year award. Yeah, very impressive. They had both sides of the ball. Sean McVay deserving, I think you would agree, of Coach of the Year. Yeah, definitely. I mean, what he did for the Rams when they went from last in the league in scoring to leading the league in scoring and winning a division title. And how about the New Orleans Saints. Rookie of the year, offense and defense. Alvin Kamara on offense, Marshawn Lattimore on defense. Almost able to intercept it. That's one he would have liked to have held on to on his first drive. Instead, second down. <laughs> I'm laughing to myself because I could just hear in film session. But coach, I was throwing to Dodell Beckham Jr. Of course I thought he was open. <laughs> They'd love to go deep downfield to him, though. Such a threat. Yeah, a rare incompletion because most of the time we expect him to actually come up with the catch. Offense still needing 10 yards. Second down. They run with a fifth-round man, Paul Perkins. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll bring up what looks to be a third in inches. Can't be more than a half a foot. Look, the first down marker is out there, but sometimes it's hard to find for an offense when they're in a long yardage situation, which usually means throw the football. In this case, they went against the tendency and ran it. And boy, the reward was there. A big, big pickup. And guess what? It's now third and very short in order to try and pick up a first down. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and it's the Giants with the football here as we begin quarter number two. But they've got a third and in inches coming up, trying to keep the chains moving. Trying to pick it up with Perkins. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. Well, partner, what do you think? Might have been four down territory if they didn't pick it up, but... Yeah, it's a moot point now. I was curious, so if they didn't get it there, would they have gone for it? I guess we'll never know. Yeah, we didn't have to make that call, but I have a feeling both of us would have said, go for it. and 10. Here's Manning. And his throw is incomplete. They were trying to get it there to Sterling Shepard. That'll bring up second down. Well, they're slinging it. 
And then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That yeah, came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. Second down now after the incompletion. They'll run it now out of the gun. And down inside the 35, he goes to the 32-yard line. Nine yards on the pickup there as he'll be left with third and one. And after that type of a run, there's some talking going on down on the field, but it's not trash talking. The guy who just carried the ball, he's going back and telling his offensive line, great job, keep it up, and we'll break that one soon. Throw on third and one. A minute 58 to go in this first half of play. We're back to Lambeau following these words. coming up at halftime we'll have Larry Ridley's highlights but points obviously hard to come by in this first half Larry will be in Orlando with our halftime report in about two minutes time yeah he and his staff they're putting together nothing but defensive highlights from the first half and there's nothing wrong with that as far as I'm concerned they snap it to Smith it would have been a long field goal the fake doesn't work out well, I see what they were trying to do there. You pop up your holder, roll him out. You got the option to run or pass. This didn't work. Not at all. The communication was excellent defensively to make sure that receivers were covered as they escaped from the line of scrimmage because that's supposed to be a surprise to everyone, and that's how they get free. People forget their assignments on defense. That didn't happen. And think about the guy rolling out with the football, looking for an open person. No one there. Helpless feeling. Helpless because that gap between you and defenders now is going to close and close quickly. Tanked up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? Neutral zone infraction, defense. And he got a little aggressive too early. And he did, wanting that quick takeoff as the ball was snapped, but I think sometimes those big guys on offense, they're pretty cagey too, right? They make those little sudden moves or those little subtle moves that get you to jump. They're good enough to move the sticks. First down now, but that clock rolling. Throwing on first down is Rodgers. Over the middle, that's caught by Adams. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. 12 yards there as they move the chains. On first down, Rodgers. He's going to dump that off to his running back, Montgomery. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. It's a gain of six on the play, and it'll make it a second down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Throwing on second down. Caught by Nelson left side. The old connection. Rodgers to Nelson getting Green Bay a first down. 
Great change up there on the route and got that inside release, made it a successful pitch and catch. Well, the first thing you want to do is have him thinking that you're going outside, make a move in that direction. Then you really don't run the route against the whole body of the defender. You run against a half of him and the inside half, and he took it right across his face, got inside, and won that route in a big way. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. As he'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Rodgers to throw once more. And that's complete to Adams. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Red zone opportunity. And again, it's Rodgers. Hammering for the goal line. He loses the football. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, and that could have been trouble. Well, that was a big oops right there. But how about his ability to correct it? Loses the football, able to get it back himself. Yeah, pounced right back on it, keeps possession. Second down, here's Rodgers. And he's going to take it in. Touchdown, Packers. Ty Montgomery as the first half is winding down. And the Packers are able to cash in for six. And that touchdown gives them a touchdown lead before they attempt the extra point. What a great way to end the half. Yeah, great job to put themselves in front. And now, see on the sideline, special teams defense scrambling, saying we want to preserve this for the final moments of this second quarter. On is Mason Crosby for the point after. And it's good to make it 7-0 Packers. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And the result, a Green Bay score. beyond now to kick it away. And it's a short kick taken out beyond the 20. 
And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. down is Manning. It's hauled in by Shepard. And this offense going to elect to burn a timeout with five seconds remaining in quarter number two. And they line up now for what will likely be the last play of the first half. One final try now for Manning. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And they can't get the long connection as it falls incomplete. So we're at halftime here at Lambeau with the Packers taking the lead to the break. As we send you down to our EA Sports Studios in Orlando where we find our man Larry Ridley with our halftime report. Thanks, Brandon. And welcome to the EA Halftime Report. Let's take a look back at the first half. Both the Packers and the Giants haven't had a reliable run game so far. The push up front has not been there, and you have to give credit to both defenses on that front. All right, here we go. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Midway through the second quarter. Defense will get to the quarterback here. This ends up as a huge loss in yardage. Okay, Larry, back here, 7-0 our score as we ready ourselves for this second half. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. The return man here, Dwayne Harris. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. The Giants offense now gets ready to head back onto the field. They're down here, but very much in this game. What's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission? Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. The drive starts with a run by Perkins. And he'll be limited to a short gain up to about the 34-yard line. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. Oh, 
Manning the throw on second down. And his throw is going to be incomplete. A pretty good coverage there in both of these defenses. They've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it. And in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? Throwing is Manning on third down. Packer pressure, and down he goes. Nick Perry able to drop it for a loss of 12, and it'll be fourth down. There's a little bit of defense right there. Nickel set, five defensive backs. They just snuffed out every round that was going. Quarterback never got rid of the football. Here's Brad Wing now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And he gets this away, angled for the sideline with a lot behind it. Wow. That one sails out of bounds. The side judge will walk it off. And he says it went out of bounds at the nine-yard line. Nice punt. Here's the Packers offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. They were able to get the ball back here, didn't surrender any points. Now they'll look to add to that lead. Yeah, how about the boost the defense gave them? Going right out on the field, shutting them down, not giving up any points, and turning the ball back over. They want to do their part now and show them a little respect and some <laughs> gratitude by scoring some points. And to get a little more cushion. And tough starting field position here. They'll try to get something going with Ty Montgomery. Room past the 20. And brought down, but not before they're able to get it up to the 25. They give him 17 yards that time as that'll move the chains. I think many people thought Ty Montgomery would automatically go back to being a wide receiver this year. But it appears he's going to stay at running back. I know they drafted Jamal Williams from BYU, but Montgomery proving his worth. And he proved it, yeah, proved it last year. 5.4 yards per carry, fourth best in the league. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. First down, they run again. Here's Montgomery. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. Big boys down there in the trenches and a nice play to stop them cold. Nothing there. Yeah, when you talk about big boys, you talk about those defensive tackles, those nose tackles. They're not just big, they're immense. And what a <laughs> big time play there. Final minute now of the third quarter. Here's Rodgers looking to throw on second down. That's caught by Geronimo Allison. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Rodgers to Allison, good for a Green Bay first down. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. He can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go through a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure out the passer. Rodgers going to throw. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. A gain of four on the play, and that'll bring up second down. Nice job there, right, of just going through the progressions, finding the open man, even if it wasn't for a 25-yard gain. Everything does not have to be spectacular. The mundane works pretty well in this league, as we just saw there. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll
return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now at Lambeau. It's Packer football here as they've got the lead as well to begin the fourth quarter. So they're leading. They have possession of the football, and certainly this is where they just want to milk the clock. 319! They go play action for Montgomery, and now Rodgers. And Rodgers has it over on the right side. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. The Rodgers to Rodgers connection, good for a Packer first down. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down, stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. Time is starting to run out, really becoming a factor. We'll see if the defense can get the stop they need to get the ball back to the offense. Now a play fake here on first down. The ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Pressure, and that's certainly going to be a key to this game going forward. And that time, they were able to get in there and influence the throw. And remember, quarterbacks got to get rid of it. They don't have the tuck rule that they can fall back on anymore. Second down following the incompletion. Throwing again. Rodgers. His throw is going to be incomplete. Another incompletion would certainly be ideal defensively. A big play now. This is third and ten. Rodgers again now. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And he slides to avoid the hit. Holding offense. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Following the penalty, Montgomery. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. And whistles, and we're going to have another stoppage of play as they call the timeout on defense with 1.53 left. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to make it a two-score game. And the 10-year bet knocks it through the goalpost. And the lead moves to 10 zip. So make some room next to Tom Dempsey on the NFL's all-time field goal distance leaderboard. That's going to go down officially as a 63-yarder. Let's not forget about David Akers, Jason Elam, and Sebastian Janikowski, too. So now Matt Prater is 64. He's got a little bit of company up near the top spot. That was one heck of a kick right there. After the main field goal, now Crosby will do the kickoff duties. 
And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. And now out come the Giants. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try to figure out what is working, and call more of that. To throw is Manning. And nearly picked off there, and it would have been a great time for their first pick. Instead, it's second down. I guess they're in a situation now, fourth quarter, where they're forced to take some chances, but I don't know that that was the type of a chance you want to take. And that one could very easily have been intercepted. And if it does get picked off, that could possibly seal this one. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. Manning going to give to Perkins on the draw. And he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. And a stoppage here, a timeout before this third down play takes place. As they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gaunt alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes the timeout. And now we're set to get going. The Giants on third down. Just one for three thus far. This will be third and five. Manning to throw. And he overshot him there. It's out of bounds incomplete. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Now Manning, got to have this one. And Marshall's got it. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. Give him eight on the play, and they're able to pick up the conversion here on fourth down. Now Manning. His throw incomplete. They were looking to find space there for Paul Perkins. And that'll bring up second down. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. Now Manning. He's got the hook up to Odell Beckham. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A giant first down, Manning to an open Beckham. Back to throw, Manning. Toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. Evan Ingram was the intended target, and now it's second down. But not to get too overcritical there, because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it, and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. Play action. Manning. And he finds a man with a crossing route. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A good pick up there, a 22. And they'll get up and spike it right at 40 seconds to go.
Again, it's Manning. And this one is incomplete. He was looking for Evan Ingram, the tight end. And it'll bring up third down. What a job by this defense all game long. They've come together and really said, no one's crossing our goal line, and they're definitely not going to start right now. You can just see the dejection. Feel like nothing is working offensively. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. To throw, it's Manning. And Ingram holds it in. And he will take it on in for a giant touchdown. Evan Ingram, 27 yards. And the Giants have got it back to a one-score game. I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They got the touchdown they needed, but if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively there, you're probably hoping for a one-to-five play drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right, and if you have that one-to-five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope when they had to slog their way downfield. They got the touchdown, but it's almost like, ah. Uh, yeah. yeah, you know. It doesn't you kinda, feel right. Exactly. <laughs> A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And it was finished off by a touchdown by the New York Giants. So still a small chance here with a little over 30 seconds to go, but they're definitely going to need this one to bounce their way. And this is going to be recovered by the hand team. And that should just about put a capper on this one. Well, for a second there, I had flashbacks to a few years ago, the NFC Championship game for the Packers, but here they're able to hold on. And many things changed in Green Bay after that game. Personnel, people coaching, the whole deal. And in this case, they get it done. No fail like they had in Seattle. The Packers looking to get out of here with a win as they take the knee. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. will take a knee here and that should be all she wrote. The Packers on third down. Just one for three thus far. This is going to be third and 13. Well, Charles, the old saying, the old cliche, if you will, points at a premium, that certainly applied here, didn't it? And that almost like opened up a time capsule, didn't it? Old school football, low scoring, close game. What a way to finish it up. You loved it, didn't you? You I loved did. the defense. I certainly did. Brought back the images of the game of old.
So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn. And this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com.